could eat a page for hours. Please. Kiss me. Greetings and the salutations. This is The Cage's Kiss, a supposedly ultimate Nick Cage podcast, as the kids call it today. And we like to, every week, watch a movie and discuss his life and times and said movie. We also like to gleam the cube of all the Christian sins we can out of this and whatever nonsense we can get out of his performance that week. And this week is no different, except I will share with you a story, my friends, Uh because this movie is about a short story, a very short story. Let me tell you a story. There was a sculptor. He found this stone, a special stone. He dragged it home and he worked on it for months until he finally finished it when he was ready he showed it to his friends they said he had created a great masterpiece but the sculptor said he own created nothing the statue was always there he just chipped away the rough edges you're always going to be tearing away at yourself until you come to terms with who you are Until you come full circle. This was a story by Colonel Sam Troutman to a John J. Rambo. And this week, I am Donnie, or Big Texas Kuma. (laughs) 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 Adrian? (laughs) 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 (laughs)
fucking hard to pay attention to this shit. Did it make you mad? Did it make you mean mad? It made me a very bad woman. <laughs> I, I fucking watched it. Uh, like, I, I, after the first time of watching it, I, I was asking the boys, like, wait, wait, what the, why the fuck did this happen? What the fuck did this person have to do with the story? And, like, I didn't know what the fuck just happened. I had no idea. So it is I a watched. chain of events that seem nearly disconnected. Chain, chain, chain. <laughs> chain of dumbasses. Chain um. of hotels. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched it again and decided to uh, pay closer attention. And I, I mapped out uh, the fucking beats of the goddamn movie. And Linda has a psycho wall of this movie. I do. Yeah. <laughs> too with all the like the red strings attaching to uh, one thing to another um <laughs> it's it's fucking terrible but uh and i i think i busted my brain by doing it because not only did i force myself to pay close attention to this goddamn movie but i also watched the fucking movie twice like Back to back. And by choice. Just like it was on TBS or some shit. I made a very bad mistake. <laughs> um, so now my brain's all busted. Um, more so than before. Uh, and I, I will give Bustin you. Busting makes me feel good. Makes me feel good. Um, I, I, I gotta, uh, tell y'all that the, um, this movie for whatever reason is only available through, uh, through Amazon Prime. <laughs> and uh amazon prime has that awesome uh x-ray feature that uh links up with imdb and it tells you like the trivia and it gives you the actors uh best known for blah 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 but uh the x-ray feature has names for most of the character while imdb and the movie's closing credits actually actually refer to them as shit as um like the woman in red is um, dancing with me Cheek to cheek. Cheese to cheese. Uh, <laughs> the old sniper who oh okay so the the woman in red is uh they gave her the name of renata never mind uh, that in the movie nobody has a spoken name i'm pretty sure yeah uh, no not, we'll not at all i have no idea where they got these fucking names from because it's not even they the names pulled them of the out actors. of their asses <laughs> it's bizarre yeah, that's imdb i guess um then uh there's the old sniper who's uh who they gave the name markham and it's uh veronica mars's dad uh enrico Colatoni. Colantoni. Suave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. From Stigmata. <laughs> Stigmata. Uh, there's the very bad woman. <laughs> she is it's a mean punished. evil lady. Uh, they gave her the name Gabrielle. Uh, the Curious Assassin, they gave the name Royce. And They should have the called this assassin. whole thing The Curious Assassin. That would have been a better title. <laughs> right? It would have been more fitting. Because those guys are like, well, we're here to kill you, Nicolas Cage, but we'll listen to your story to pad out the running time. Thank you for oh indulging me. Do you like a shot and a beer? I got tequila and stuff, you know. I run a hotel. <laughs> okay, uh, you just influenced me to uh, change my uh my sequel return more harder <laughs> oh what have i done oh, and then you're ever the shifting mean the assassin fates. he's mean um, <laughs> the mean assassin's given the name quirk so quirk uh, the mean old that. meanie and i'm just gonna try to go through this really fucking quickly my little roadmap of the the beats and the scenes so, him. <clears throat> Sanchez tries to kill Markham, Veronica Mars's dad. He finds out that his handler, or whatever the fuck he is, Dean, got the order. Uh, Suki's brother, uh, uh, that's Jason Stackhouse, is playing Erickson, Lance Erickson, uh, who's a G-man. Uh, he and G -man, a cop, Miguel took uh, Sanchez into custody in the back of Miguel's police car. Sanchez pitted them against each other and Jason shot them both. Jason took the diamonds and is with Renata, the lady in red. Uh, he's trying to get her out of the country. 
uh, but they don't really establish why. Um, and uh, Gabrielle slash the madam slash the uh, was it the very bad woman. She's mean very evil bad woman. Uh, she finds them and tries to kill Jason Stackhouse and get her uh, her lady back because apparently the woman in red is her her bebe. Even um, though she calls her a puta. Puta, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh it's a very strange a scene i'm not going to lie <laughs> lady yes, in red pushy cat. <laughs> <laughs> she goes to the ho- uh, hotel the uh was it franco's hotel or some shit like that uh to yeah. meet aranya for uh the passport and ids that jason stackhouse uh somehow set up for her um and we find out that he's cage and they bone uh they go down to the bone zone uh gabrielle shows up (laughs) (laughs) as a very bad woman she shows up with her man Oso to get uh, the Oso, lady who's red. got that haircut. Yeah. Oh, so Oso, serious. Uh, <laughs> I barely um, know this beauty by my have you side. Seen my woman in red. I am looking for my woman. I'm very angry. <laughs> she is one hot tomato. Let me tell you, I know from experience. Uh, she will tell you anything like she will sleep with you. But I kill you, you touch her. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's like you were playing part of the movie. (laughs) 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 Cage poisons Oso with a shit ton of pills. (laughs) Oso dead. Um, Yeah, 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 he died. (laughs) Uh, Lady in Red stabs uh, the very bad woman to death violently. A bunch. Uh, yeah, like a whole 30 bunch. times. <laughs> you got scars on your hands, Nicholas Cage. Why can't you kill the very bad woman? I don't do that anymore, so not going to be of much use to you. I want these diamonds. Stab me, but stab them. Except for poisoning the guy downstairs, but ignore yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, he'll, he does the passive murder. He doesn't do that active murder anymore. Apparently. Yeah. Um, I refuse to give a gash to another gash that doesn't die after seven <laughs> days. <laughs> so, uh, oh, and in the beginning... The, uh, there are, uh, two assassins that come to, uh, I guess to kill, uh, Nicolas Cage's character. And he says, let me tell you a story. It goes a little. About a sculpture. Like this. <laughs> Is it a long story or a short story? I don't know if I want to hear a story right now. Well, we got to pad out the running time. So just indulge me a little bit. <laughs> I got to tell it you. It does pay off though. Yeah, it we find worried. out all the things. Yes, all oh, the things. Oh, I actually meant when the end, when after the story, he's like, you just had to stay for the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he pulls oh, out his guitar oh. and goes, it, it goes a little something like this. Yeah, that, that's part <laughs> of the tease, that vague level of self-awareness. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he tells them the story. Um, and the story is that Dirty Sanchez burned. Uh, oh, okay. So, um. <sighs> Nicholas Cage There's a shipping crate be... with people inside it. <laughs> yeah, Nicholas Cage used to be a hitman with a partner who was uh, Franco, who Franco. originally owned the hotel. James and Franco. People keep asking him, "Where's Franco?" And uh, anywho, so um, he they were both taking a shipment. Uh, I, I guess across. I don't know. They were they were they were shipping it somewhere. Um, then they apparently find out that uh, what was it, Donnie? That they got they got caught. They got burned. The stuff got messed up, so they were told to dump the shipment to set it on fire and get the money and bring it back and hide the evidence because things went tits up yeah so they go to destroy the evidence and burn it and find out that it's a bunch of little girls <laughs> All three women, nine, nine, ten, eleven. i see them <laughs> yeah like donnie said and then, um, so then he's telling, he goes on to tell the story and says that Dirty Sanchez is the one who burned, ended up burning the girls after they tried to save them. And, um, James Franco took a girl as his daughter, not as a, 
not like it wasn't that. inappropriate at all you just take a random little girl and you're like you're my daughter now and it's not creepy or inappropriate at all mm-hmm. nope no you just do face waterfalls because that's how they got <laughs> a son <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah he uh, franco was the... torn from the thigh of zeus <laughs> Yes. He took her to the social security office and said, I found this girl. She's my daughter now. <laughs> They're like, okie dokie. <laughs> Stamp. <laughs> but, uh, so the, the little girl grows up and decides that she wants to uh, become a drug mule. And uh, she's 15 and she knows her mind now. She knows what she wants. Daddy, you're mean daddy. You say I can't put drugs up in me. <laughs> And to be fair, yeah. uh, I was a 15-year-old girl, and at that no. age, you you are pretty fucking sure that you know everything about everything. It's true. Um, so, I mean, I still apologize to uh, my mom for being 15. Um, but uh, So she's uh, muling some pills, and she's picked up, tortured, and murdered by Jason Stackhouse and Miguel, who took the pills. And then um, they, uh, Jason Stackhouse and Miguel, were on, uh, you find out that they were on uh, the very bad woman's payroll. And uh, Franco tried to get, uh, tried to get payback uh, without thinking it through uh, because he was angry. And uh, so she had Franco killed and uh, Mr. Mars was there, but didn't stop the girls from burning. And uh, he said that he, it, it really, it really changed him. And he can't look at his daughter the same anymore ever since that. But, but he didn't do anything to stop him. So, um, yeah. Cage and, uh, and the lady in red kill the hitman <laughs> that he was telling the story to because as it turns out he was telling her the story for motivation to kill them and uh he gives her the diamonds uh from the the original hit i guess and uh cage kill oh that's right because he learned what blood diamond uh what the term blood diamond really means because it's a digimon yeah. houston movie that's not very good yeah <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And last but not least, uh, Cage kills uh, Veronica Mars's dad and calls his daughter, presumably Veronica. I just shot your father in the face. You want to go out with me? I'm like 60. <laughs> and yeah, so I used to I kill people, by the girls. way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's kind of like the ending of that one uh, Richard Gere and uh, Kim Basinger movie set in New Orleans where uh, Jerome Crabe crashes through the wall on fire to attack them, except it's not at all bitchin' like that movie was. Oh. Um, so the thing about Kill Chain is it came out on October 19th of 2019, and we don't know what the budget was. We're assuming it wasn't that much because this isn't super ambitious in that department. But worldwide, it drew uh, a, a total money of twelve thousand seven hundred and eighty seven dollars that's a little money that is not a lot of money that's that's maybe a thoroughly used car but it would never get you a new car Mm-mm. No. yeah no. and and in this case the worldwide release by the way was just in the country ukraine where it opened at number 14 behind sonic the hedgehog birds of prey gotta go fast <laughs> gotta go fast <laughs> <laughs> got, got all leave theaters fast <laughs> and the Richard Jewell movie and some foreign shit and it only ran for two weeks there so ah. so yeah no you, you're just walking past uh, Chernobyl and you're not having a very good day and then you see this Nicolas Cage movie and you're having a worse day <laughs> um, yeah and then, and now it's only on well, Amazon so if you want to pay <laughs> no money you could see it on there because everybody's pretty much given up on it um, yeah you can only see it on Amazon Linda, what was that? What was that colorful bit of IMDb yeah. trivia that was so oh, informative? Jesus. Tell us, tell the listeners what that was. So, if we weren't so uh, so far into our uh, and so close to the end of our podcast, to our own asses, yeah, <laughs> we weren't so far. <laughs> we up weren't our own so asses. far up our own ass. <laughs> oh my gosh, 
should just start off every segment with that. Um, we, I'd say that we should have a fucking segment just on the stupid shit we see in IMDb trivia. It is but, as um, stupid, if not more stupid, than the reviews Donnie finds. Yeah, because... Um, you know, really, there's no point in looking in trivia. Uh, like, I, 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 I do my research through, like, the, but, you know, but, like, Googling but, and finding articles, but... That one we found was a gem. <laughs> this one is one of a great fucking examples of why we don't use trivia from IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides Not anymore, the fact anyway. that you could easily find it. Um, it. One of the pieces of IMDb trivia was, quote... In the vein of the, quote, greatest detective noirs film, end quote. <laughs> and so, and uh, yeah. while that's not trivia in any sense, uh, you, you, you wouldn't <laughs> really you of. wouldn't you wouldn't really call it a fact. Um, it does sort of pertain to the fact that uh, writer director Ken Sanzel had aspirations of doing noir sort mm -hmm. of. Like it, like it, really? it really feels like I, I think so. I think so. I think it's called delusions of grandeur. Well, no, yeah, no, <laughs> it, no. He failed. We're all, we're all uh, on the same page that this is a massive failure. But I, I think the idea was is that he also aspired to do a thing bigger than what he was ever going to do with his abilities or or anything else. So basically, like, 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 like noir. When we say that, we're thinking of good shit, like Double Indemnity with by by Billy Wilder or Orson Welles' mm -hmm. Touch of Evil. You know, that's that's the that sort of conjures up. But this is the 2000s, so nothing that good is ever going to get made again. So he's sort of trying to make a straight-to-video Sin City. So we're, we're a few generations yeah. down from that. Uh, but Mr. Sanzel uh, was a writer before this. This is his first directorial effort. But um, uh, he, he did a Stephen Baldwin movie called Scar City, and he wrote The Replacement Killers with Chow Yun-Fat and Jurgen Prochnov and, and David Morse, which is not good. Um, I like David Morris, but it also uh, had um, didn't it have Mira Sorvino. It, I, if that was the lady in that, I'll take your word for it. It was probably was. I don't remember her being very distinct. I saw that in the theater on a very rainy day because oh. El Nino was happening when that came out. If that was and her, then, then that's what happened to her career. That, 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 we there it goes right out the window. Yeah, that was Anton Fuqua, actually. That was one of his first major films. Uh, Fuqua. But, um, Fuqua. Fuqua! Yes. Um <laughs> And uh, Sanzel did a 2015 thing called Blunt Force Trauma, and he wrote four Ooh. episodes of the TV show Numbers. Which so I you know he's seen, good. To be fair, I, I don't I have recommend to admit it. That I haven't seen it, but like just reading the synopsis of it, and I'm I'm a data analyst, but like looking at that, it's like somebody solves murders by uh, using mathematical. Uh, figures i'm like when the, the if you're stupid what? everyone's got a gimmick thing because you had that and then you had that one about the milf mom with no career now that was like i'm cool because i'm southern gal and oh, i don't take oh, no oh i'm the closer motherfucker i was the born queen <laughs> yeah, and i don't take no shit from I'll nobody talk <laughs> i'm gonna break oh, off an ashtray in your fucking neck wasn't that mrs kevin bacon yeah Curious yeah, Sedgwick? that's um, yeah. yeah, that's Kara Sedgwick. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna break your neck in half over the back of this chair. I tell you what, I'm a real <laughs> no shit woman. <laughs> You see this cigar? I'm going to put it out in your eye. You don't start talking sense, boy. <laughs> I'm going to put it out in your man vagina. I got your name. I got your ass. <laughs> the closer, everybody. Am I right? That's, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> But uh, no, I never no. Fucking watched it, so I'm pretty sure. Fuck, fuck all those gimmick <laughs> cop shows. Sure fuck, exactly fuck it. Criminal Minds. Uh, yeah. But speaking of massive <laughs> fucking talent behind the camera, um, uh, uh, fucking Kill Chain comes to us from the same slew of straight to video producers that give us all our straight to video cage movies. So one of the producers yep. is Boaz Davidson, the Israeli director who did uh, Lemon Popsicle. The Last American Virgin and fucking Dang. American Cyborg Steel Warrior. Oh shit! <laughs> he was a frequent collaborator of Golan Globus back when Golan Globus were a thing. Back when they were producing Chuck Norris and Charles Bronson movies. So the Last American Virgin is one of those uh, inappropriate movies that 
Donnie and I watched as a kid. <laughs> as kids. Inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the movies that our cousin Brian was yes. really intimate about me and him watching. And this was before he came out of the closet, oh. and he was trying to sell to me how awesome it was and funny because these guys pull their dicks out to have a competition to see who has the longest one. <laughs> and it was an interesting time in our lives. That's uh, that was the day they learned a valuable lesson with cousins. That it's girth that matters, not length. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the size, it's how you use it. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes a long time to get to London in a rowboat. So we mentioned the old sniper, Enrico Colantino, from Veronica Mars in AI and Stigmata with Mrs. Arquette, who was Mrs. Nicholas Cage. And as Donnie was saying earlier, I got Stigmata in my eye. Stigmata in the eyes! <laughs> Zombie Jesus! <laughs> And don't forget that the sassy lady in red was Annabelle Acosta. And she was born yeah. in Havana in 1987. And she was on the shows Quantico and Ballers. And she was on one whole episode of Supernatural. And Supernatural. Tumblr just blew up because Supernatural did that gay shit that Tumblr wanted. Woo! Tumblr won. <laughs> All of us lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I fought the Tumblr and the Tumblr won. Bring back Tumblr, oh, goddammit. <laughs> Tumblr died the day they took away those poor women's pornography. That's what I'm fucking saying. They're like, okay, so we're gonna censor everything. You can't show uh, nipples or belly buttons anymore. You can't say the word gay anymore because somebody might get offended. Don't they know this well, is you a can't murder. Show a nipple. It just can't be flesh colored nipples. They, wait, oh. wait a minute. That means they're oh, only so underage you nipples. <laughs> or like you could have like blue. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was a big nipple controversy. I remember oh. this back when I was active on Tumblr. What kind? So what color lipstick do I, we need to put off. on our on our nipples? Can you have a Twi'lek nipple? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it! Don't talk about a species you know nothing of. <laughs> You're in the presence of an nothing. expert, Linda. <laughs> Donnie exactly. is a fucking expert. He's got a fucking tattoo <laughs> of, of twirling squid getting freaky. What? Freak nasty. What? So back to hotel chain. <laughs> when did you look at my ass? This is the second <laughs> Nicolas Cage movie in a row to be shot in the great nation of Colombia. Who cares about this? Linda saw the tattoo on my ass. <laughs> well, don't move her if you don't want her to know what's on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was the day know. where you were like, I have to ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to make his butt clap. <laughs> I'm just trying to make my twerk and work. <laughs> I can make your butt clap. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do with all that butt? <laughs> uh, what you gonna do, do with we really all have that? To talk about this movie? Well, no, we, we do have to talk about it. Because this is Stabby McHooker, the motion picture. Watch the hooker stabby stab stab on that pimp lady. Question whether or not they had a lesbian yeah. relationship. Stabby McHooker, coming this fall. Well, the uh, yeah. very bad, bad woman seemed to think that they had a lesbian relationship. Yeah, I, I was, I kind of well, questioned like it. I'm like, it. I'm like, was it, are they, yeah. were they, it seemed, they seemed to be alluding that, or is it just one of those things where it's like, that's just the thing that a pimp no. says to their, but then again, male pimps no, who say that to their. relationship. Yeah. Because the guy even tells Nick Cage that when they're downstairs and he's drinking the poison shit. Oh, oh, he's, he spells it out. He's like, oh, listen to that. They're going to be all bitch this mm. and poor to that and then they're gonna be like oh i love you and then everything will be just fine like it's like that's if, the shit that if was you going if on. you've been listening along lately uh, you know it's like obviously you know i'm i'm you know of, of the gay persuasion so i don't have a problem with there being lesbians in movies and shit it's just that it seems so often there are movies I that we like the movie they're hot the movies that we do are the ones where it's tacked on shit for exploitation purposes, where it adds oh God, nothing yeah. and it's also not incidental. It's all like, look at me, I'm in a red dress. Oh, I got nipples. I do lesbian stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> and also there are tacos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that they eat the tacos in Colombia. I think it's different down there. They all <laughs> eat it like, Applebee's or something. You sound like hand uh, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez. Hand <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <Jennifer> Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> Taco 
flavored kisses for my Benjamin. Obviously, <laughs> we're we're nothing but respectful here at Cage's Kiss. Um, obviously. <laughs> So there's 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 the two assassins who Cage tells the story to towards the end. One of them says, I've been trying to get out of here for the last half hour. And I was like, boy, do I know that feeling, guy. <laughs> yeah. That's what they should have called this. <laughs> but your friend, you may want to get out of here and kill me, but your friend, he wants to hear how the story ends. Don't you, guy? Yeah. 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 How, how'd you get this hotel, Nicholas Cage? Oh, a friend left it to me. Really? We heard you don't have any friends. And it's like, yeah, he said that's left to, which implies that he's dead. That's that yeah. that's that's when he's like, oh, my friends are dead. <laughs> no, see, he could have had a moment like in that between worlds where it's like, that was really harsh. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, like, I mean. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I was going to give you a drink, but no. I have this thing that kind of drives Carlo crazy when we're watching movies and somebody like kills somebody else or hits them or says something like that, where I go, rude. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a rude moment. <laughs> uh, so the movies, you know, it's like the series of events, right? Because somebody kills somebody and, and then they run away to somebody else and they get killed. And then the person who killed them runs away to somebody else and they get killed. So yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of like that. that, uh, that uh, it's a wait. kill chain. It, well, it's a kill chain. Yeah, that's where you get Would the you title, right? But I was, I was thinking it's like that movie, The Borrower, except without an alien taking people's heads. Yes. Yeah, it's like a good movie, only like not, you know? Yeah. I was or be... split second where you have Rutger Hauer oh, shit, yeah. chasing down an alien oh, eating people's yeah. hearts and eating donut holes. <laughs> and when you were talking about the borrower, I was thinking of the borrowers. <laughs> I, was thinking, like, I don't think that happened in that. I'm not familiar with it. I'm pretty no. sure. <laughs> what? No, Ian Holmes' head came off that time. It all fits. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, but I, I definitely have some fucking questions with this, uh, this movie. Like, like uh, why not you know, hire actors? There's an idea. <laughs> um, although I, I, to be fair, Nicholas Cage is doing an all right fucking job. I mean, he's not like working on an Oscar, but as, I'm as like, an, as an actor, he's doing an all right job as a producer. He's doing a terrible job. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. Without a doubt. Cause yeah. this is another Saturn films ball, turd, ball. you know, it's just like, you know, you know, you directed a movie. Maybe take the reins a little bit and be like, hey, director, that take was really good. But let's do one that's not crap, okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do one where I'm not wearing my Billy Mays beard, please? <laughs> no? Can we do okay. one where maybe the audience could see what's happening? I um. Yeah. Can we do this with a shot from my beard's perspective? <laughs> <laughs> oh, beard like... cam during the fuck scene. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beard cam. I feel like they they filmed this movie before uh, the last movie, which was the uh, Running with the Devil. Because <laughs> like it Running with the Devil, he's got that scene where he shaves clean and uh, oh, yeah. Lawrence. Oh, and Lawrence Fishburne's all like, like, "You got a date or something?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I and there was like no fucking reason for him to shave. So I'm no. thinking that he was just like, like, why are you shaving? Because I got to get ready for the next movie. Or <laughs> cause, oh, oh, I oh get okay. They, the they crossed the Andes that. right to get to the next set. That's why they're they got the backpacks and all that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's exactly. how you get around in Colombia. <laughs> well, <laughs> for part of it is because the Pan American Highway isn't 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 not paved during that part of it. So the part where oh. where South America is joined with Central America, there are no roads at all. It's only jungle. In fact, the only they people who go roads. there are assholes who are backpacking and drug smugglers. There are no roads in Central America. It pisses me off because this is the fucking 21st century. Cocaine. You should be able to drive all the way from fucking the top of Alaska to goddamn Patagonia, goddamn it, motherfucker, son of a bitch. Hey, we learned something today. Ba -da -ba. So in my notes, I have um, after I, I did the fucking roadmap of this stupid fucking crazy plot and, um, <laughs> my note says wait so we're supposed to believe that cage planned every fucking step of this out including the timing he offered jason stackhouse the passports ids whatever and i guess because he knew that the uh lady in red was 
boning him and he was planning to get her out of the country for some reason. And then he or, sees all she's running. She's running from the uh, very bad woman. So I, I think that means that she was a sex worker and they don't really say why she's running from her. But um, so anyway, uh, then Jason killed Sanchez and Miguel. And after Sanchez uh, is like offered them money to whoever killed the other one first. And oh, that's um, the 90s scene. Yeah, yeah, and so like, so n- how, okay. Then how did Nicolas Cage know that Jason was going to kill Miguel and Sanchez? Because the cast then, of this movie are the only people in the entire world. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you notice, yeah. like, they, they're, they're we're on, we only have DEA agents who are crooked and pimps and Johns and uh, snipers and hitmen. And, like, there's nobody working at an all-night convenience store. There's nobody else on the street. Like, there's one other person who walks yeah. up the cage to have a cigarette, but she's a prostitute as well. And, and so, like, this, he is the god of the tiny world in which he inhabits. Well, and then um, then the very bad woman kills, well, tortures and kills Jason Stackhouse. But, like, also, how did he know that would happen? Okay, and... no, for real. That's the well, part of the like movie. You did when you did all your research, Linda. They're all linked together. That's what's supposed to be the clever part. This, means this first time director I, fucked up. I on. kept zoning out during the part after the shootout in the slaughterhouse or wherever, where where, where the bad woman's introduced, yeah. and the part where where the lady in red is in the car with that other guy. And and I'm like, and I kept I kept going like, wait a minute. So did that that one American type dude? Did, is he dead now or? Now we got this fella, yeah. and like I kept tuning out at the exact same moment, and I kept trying to capture it, but the movie well, defies I attention, partly because like, it's shot very dark. Rewatching it, I think that like he he planned all, obviously he planned all this out, so he he put oh god, it's so fucking hard. Um, he apparently offered or like he he's the one who offered Jason Stackhouse the passport and IDs. Although I guess Jason Stackhouse did not recognize him. He just know, knows him as his name, which is translated to be the yeah. spider or just spider. Boy, um, the spider. And then um, I guess like he tells Jason Stackhouse about the the diamonds uh, that uh, are there to pay off Sanchez. But he he must have been the one who hired the guy who hired Sanchez because he knows that the diamonds are there and those are his diamonds. And it's a twist. So yeah. he hired, he oh, fucking balls. If this he was made hired, by the guy who made running with the devil, it would cut us back to South Africa and we'd see how diamonds get mined. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So he hired, uh, um, Fuck, he hired, uh, <laughs> he hired, he hired, uh, um, like Veronica Mars's dad to kill who knows, Enrico. we don't know. <clears throat> and then, um, he also hired Sanchez to kill Veronica Mars's dad. And, uh, he told Veronica Jason Mars' dad, that, Enrico, who it turns out was upstairs the whole time. Cause, cause we start then, off with him in the opening scene after we get the cage, uh, wraparound bit. And so mm-hmm. we're like, oh, where was that at? Oh, it turns out that guy was in the hotel the whole time. It's the universe. We'll never get out of it. Oh yeah. Like on the second uh, time around, I saw that there's the sign under the, they show the sign yes. of Frank yeah. Rose hotel or whatever. But, um, Okay, so then he he told Jason that the diamonds would be there and that he could pick up Sanchez and take the diamonds. And I guess he just knew that Jason was going to kill Miguel and Sanchez for the diamonds. And then he also uh, coordinated this thing to give Jason Stackhouse the uh, uh, the IDs, passports, whatever. And then he somehow knew that the very bad woman would kill Jason. And then he somehow knew that uh, the lady in red would just happen to show up at just the right time. I think and- maybe some of this was supposed to be a merry coincidence. And he, he rolled with it once it came. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe plan A was that um, that Lance and the very bad woman kill each other. And then plan B was to have 
uh, the lady in red lead Gabrielle to the hotel so he could kill her. Maybe and... there should have been a scene of him playing chess with his friend and there's a no yeah. cell phone sign. But then Veronica Mars you mean is scenes that actually had things happening. Yeah. Well, like like I like instead I instead of doing what the director wanted, which is to make an action movie with no cliched action things, meaning no action at all. Well, it, well, I mean, like I, I, apparently it's supposed to be more like a noir, but the result is more like one of the Albert Pyun movies shot in Mexico City. You know, where a bunch of supposed badasses have occasional gunplay, but mostly discuss the convoluted plot. Gunplay makes yeah. me think of like something kinky. <laughs> but look on the bright side, guys. It's better than Lucky number 11 is it though <sighs> yes it um, is lucky number 11 is a like, fucking turd everything the director does is an utter turd i hate him so much i want to punch him later veronica mars's dad says something to him about like well what would have happened if sanchez killed me and he plan said, d and f and, and maybe e. c <laughs> So we don't know what that is. And here's an idea, uh, Veronica's dad. Um, Enrico. More, like if somebody is uh, on another building shooting through your window, maybe instead of getting a mattress and walking across the room, maybe you just <laughs> go up against the wall and crawl under <laughs> I was, I was. Wow, that is so weird to see a mattress crawling. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was watching I that scene, and and I was thinking like, okay, so when 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 I when I embark on my life of crime and become an international hitman who is nameless but so awesome and badass, that I I got to get one of those little fishing poles with a magnet on the end in case I'm stuck under a window and I need to yep. get my gun. I'm thinking, and I need to put those under yes. all the windows because that situation is just going to arise because I'm going to be That's in this stupid freaking hotel in, in Bogota or wherever and, and, and have these stupid tinted windows, which are open and don't have screens because it's real hot outside. And I guess they don't have air conditioners mm -hmm. and that situation is just going to happen. No way around it. No. Nope. So now see, you can have that in your movie and you can have a scene that sets up. <clears throat> how everyone's like oh as a kid he used to play that fishing game it was electric and he had a little pole <laughs> with a little tiny little magnet on it they had to go and get the fish as they open and close their mouths and he always got all those fish in that pond and then one day mommy and, and daddy wouldn't wake matches. up and i needed to go to the bus driver for help <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he won't wake up <laughs> <laughs> who won't wake up <laughs> what do i look like the wake up patrol I was so proud of myself for mapping this out, but then I was just like, like, okay, oh I understand kind <laughs> of now, but does it make it the movie better? No, 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 nothing's going to really fix doesn't. it. Well, especially for the, for the fact that we get a teaser, a cage at the beginning, which is a scene that's shown later anyway. And Cage goes away for the first entire half of the movie. Yes! It takes yes. him 45 minutes to resurface because all those people killing people, there's no cutting back to Cage. We just have to keep – because no. cause the movie gets caught up. It's like, check out this scene. This scene's really badass because these, these DEA guys oh. or whatever are driving this cop car with a suspect in the back, but they're dirty. No, even then it stops the movie midway when Nick Cage is like, so uh, you guys want to hear a story? It's a short <laughs> one. And then it's suddenly like movie stops progressing and then it's like, okay, let's go back and show you about all, all the shit mm -hmm. about the lady in red, set up all the shit. Yeah, that's and then you get the flashbacks, which is some happened. of the only action. <laughs> yeah. Yes, again. And the only action and an it's action. uh you know, um I mean the DP was pretty comp was was pretty competent, uh, but but uh, for for the most part there's a lot of scenes where you just don't see anything. <laughs> And Don no. finished the movie before Adrian and I did, so Adrian and I yeah. were asking him in our chat, like, so when does Cage come back? <laughs> like, is he in this? Yeah. I, I was starting to get the real feel, the very strong feeling that it was like a Cage Cameron Mitchell moment where where, yes. where, where they yes. paid him to be in one scene that, that wraps around the movie and the movie in the middle doesn't have him. It's like that yeah. Linda Blair yeah. movie yeah. where they yeah. took two... They took two Italian Spanish co productions, edited them together, and then threw in Linda Blair in a wraparound, and then they put her on the poster in the jungle holding a machine gun, even though she wasn't in that part. <laughs> Which one? I would have loved if they actually started doing that with Nicolas Cage, where they're just like <laughs> filming him in a lawn chair in like yes. his bathrobe. <laughs> Or just doing that in his living room. Oh, yeah, room he's, he's on the on cell phone. It's like, yeah, put out the hit. Goddamn airplanes. Oh, 
I'm having yeah, a Tom's you, festival you put him in today. Put the of a limo that's just stationary and start <laughs> filming him. <laughs> just they get different colored when he flashlights, gets a man. Older, yeah. They could just have like the yeah. uh, like the flashbacks. Like, I'm going to tell you a story, grandkids. <laughs> I'll make it Merlin <laughs> Shop of Mystical yeah. Wonders with Nicolas Cage. This <laughs> reminds me of a screenplay story. that I wrote for oh, television. God. I'm going to tell you a story about how I saved Santa and thus Christmas. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that does not <laughs> rock! It could be our generation's Marlon Brando. We just <laughs> fully go off on it. <laughs> the horror. The horror. And he got I paid a helicopter <laughs> outside my home. <laughs> To take me to the studio every day. Like the studio's a ten minute walk away. Did I say I wanted to know that? <laughs> I well, want a bucket of ice for my head. Speaking of, of I need beignets from New Orleans in this shop delivered every day for my breakfast. Speaking of gravy Sad donuts, you know he'd Donnie. Get it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Donnie, yes, did you find any gems? I did, Adrian. Donnie's I review. Did. But uh, before I get to that, did Linda have any fun in this one? Oh, oh I apologize, Linda. Close. I want his clothes. Oh, close. close off. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Just boobs. There were Just nipples and areolas. Boobs. Is that what's going on? Is it wrong They're that called when areolas? I... Yeah, areolas. <laughs> Uh, is it wrong that whenever I see a sexy scene involving Cage, unless it's with an age-appropriate person, that I say, "Ew"? You're only saying that That's because they funny. didn't go for the X rating and on camera show a whole bunch of sausage links tossed in there and then slowly pulled out. Oh my again. god! If this actually was like a porn, then like, and you saw some dong, then I would be like, "Ew," but. Huh. I actually thought that's a actually, scene you really well, wanted to have. Happen, the Albert Pyun movie would have done that. Nicholas Cage's dick, and then they just throw a whole bunch of sausages <laughs> at his groin when you see it. You know that's exactly. Oh, so that, that's what we get if true. Melvin Van Peebles had directed this. <laughs> but while he's screaming yeah. for no apparent reason. <laughs> yes, just cut to a picture of him from Face Off when he's doing his. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, before we head off to your segment, I just want to say that the opening credits made me feel like I'm about to watch a 90s TV cop drama. Yeah, it did look they, like they, they used video. every filter uh, in, in the Windows Live Movie Maker box. They exhausted the Sony Vegas options on this shit. Mm-hmm. Like when it came up, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, <laughs> like, but let's be real, though. This? That's the best part, because you think you're going to watch some stupid shit, like some energetic <laughs> stupid shit. And then you get to the movie, and they don't do that. No, not at all. I'm an old assassin who looks like Rob Reiner. What's a, what, what are rice cookers, anyway? How do those work? You still asking about rice cookers? Well, rice doesn't cost a lot of money, and I travel a lot, you know? Let's just get a microwave, you oh, old piece God, of shit. That's right. My daughter and I are estranged. Rice oh, cookers, am I right, everybody? <laughs> Sorry, Donnie. Oh, What's with geez. that little coffee stirrer? Do I drink out of that or what? How do things work? I don't know. <laughs> so what did you so, find out, Donnie? Donnie's Speaking of pretentiousness, <laughs> quite possibly the most insane and yet pretentious dialogue I've ever encountered. Oh. It breaks the third wall by sheer <laughs> absurdity. Third wall. <laughs> I guess this is a movie for people who expect to see people speaking to each other in their roles as lousy movie character archetypes rather than anything that bears any resemblance to reality or entertaining fiction. Even as a fairly degenerate consumer of B-movies, this was too much for me to handle. Fucking degenerate, man. <laughs> too much. He's getting in our <laughs> heads, man. Worst. As one reviewer stated so accurately, disjointed and confusing. Mm. I forced myself to continue watching, thinking this has to do better. Not. (laughs) I kept wondering what the plot was. Where's the storyline? I finally (laughs) thought Nick Cage either must owe someone a huge favor, (sighs) or he must be related to someone involved in the making of this pointless piece of garbage. It was painful viewing, and I actually felt embarrassed for Mr. K. Two hours of my life wasted. You've been properly warned. View at your own risk. Because they watched it one and a half times. (laughs) One and a half. 
And lastly, this person does a little plugging, and I'm not going to plug their page. Oh. But let's be brief today. One, script is simple. Two, cliche. Three, realism. The cringe is real. (laughs) Four, worst cage movie. Five, true. At least the movie had two good actors, whoever the Caucasian police officer and main actress were. Five, makes black ops look like blue oops. The said B-L-O-O space O-O-P-S. Six, seriously, please watch anything else. Blue oops matters. Go, go to my military couch or yeah, couch, my military couch Facebook page what? and ask me for alternative movies or find my list. There's find, a quest my for you. list. find my First list. Find my list. Yeah. to find my list. First one to Thanks. find my list gets a free book of mine. If this no. is still going on when you read this review. Well, this guy is the soul of wit, so why wouldn't we buy his book, right? <laughs> Not. Yes. <laughs> I'm a... I love that he actually had to put that in his fucking this review. Real. Like, this has got to get better. Not. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm really surprised he was able to rein it in and not uh, remind us that this is Cage's worst movie, but Gone in sixty seconds is the best one because. Yeah, they always they do. always they for some always reason do. it's always Con Air or Gone in sixty seconds. It's never The Rock. It's never Face Off. It's Con Air and Gone in sixty seconds. What is it about those movies? Yeah. These bastards. They're they're you. fucking bastards. <laughs> <laughs> oh. At least Gone in 60 Seconds did have real actors. <laughs> so uh, did Connor. So, yes. Some, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, it's like I'm black and I can't go swimming and you're Asian and you can't drive. Gone in 60 Seconds, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Angelina <laughs> Jolie and I'm like 15 years younger than you. You make me so wet. You make my pants feel funny, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Gee, I'm a blonde this time. I don't know. Maybe I should get on that. I mean, wow, Angelina Jolie. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also take that money you're hiding in your bra because your left boob is bigger than the right boob. And that never, ever happens to any woman when they're wearing a bra. Boobs are even, like, and they're always fun to go searching for that, but I think you should just give it to me that now. That proves that he was a gentleman throughout their sloppy fuck scene. Yeah. Yeah. A gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> she came first. <laughs> a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> that's that's right. He's like Michael yes, Bolton. I believe I'm also He's a repeated. cunning linguist. Bathrobe, bubble pipe. Yeah. Oh god damn it. Oh fuck. Uh, okay. Are we ready for Adrian's segment? Speaking of fuck, <laughs> is anyone ever really ready? No, it's no. time for sequel. Take Return. 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 More. Return. More. More. Return. Return. More. Return. More harder. Harder if you don't rewind with a VCR. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll just go first. Um. So while while uh, while fucking Kill Chain may already be a sequel to Looking Glass, um, I say that we make this into a Bravo series with Cage in character visiting failing hotels and giving sage wisdom and, and small business owner <laughs> advice, while showing how to cr- increase revenue and please guests between gun battles and fucking hookers. Make sure and have some episodes in haunted hotels so you can do that <laughs> night vision shit with people going like, did you just hear that? <laughs> Kill chain. Oh. Can cage bring it back to life? Find out this Something fall. just jizzed on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually would watch a gangster show where they go to the rundown hotels. Like, you know, if you mix a little bit of glue and a little bit of oatmeal, you can cover up all these bullet holes on your wall real quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, do do a Jersey <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a real shame if something happened to this place. What with all this potential? Yeah, it'd be a shame if you don't listen to me and you go missing and somebody happens to burn this place down. <laughs> <laughs> what some somebody didn't order instant eggs no nah, nah, i had to use that money to get some quick lime i have a problem to take care of upstate <laughs> donnie yeah, did don't don't ask too many questions <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't, don't have ask about a my serious <laughs> i don't have a secret return much harder because like i was making the case earlier chatting with you all mm. 
you have to give a shit about the movie to actually care to take revenge on the movie for how shitty well, it is. Well, this this was me closest, dropping a turd on it, so what's, what's yours like? The, the closest I absolutely can do is just keep it the exact same way, but give it to Pixar and make it Toy Story 5 <laughs> and hire Harrison Ford as a villain. And there you go. You can make something out of that. Like, maybe say Andy comes back. And he's back from college and he finds out the bitch from part three he gave all his toys to <laughs> decided to give him up to a fucking school. So he's out for fucking payback because that was his <laughs> shit. So, I mean, yeah, you can go pretty dark with it. And he ends up beating the girl bloody with like Buzz Lightyear and Buzz is just horrified as more blood starts biting around his shield and his wings break off in her eye, and he's just scarred the rest of his life for it. What is happening? This That's Toy what he Story gets for five. being Tim Allen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to infinity and up your ass. <laughs> Donnie, you're probably you shaved okay? about right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not okay, because we've been talking about this goddamn movie and giving it more attention than it deserves. Nobody's going to watch it. I, I didn't know. Okay, I don't know half the I shit as well as I should like in this movie, and I like less mm. than half the shit as well as it deserves to be liked. This movie was a piece of shit on a level of no shit, except dried dog shit, which weighs less than actual shit when they shit it out. There's no value to this at all. So, Jay, would you recommend Kill Chain? <laughs> Stop ripping off better shows than ours, you damn <laughs> asshole. I'd find a worst one, but I never did. Linda, what's your uh, sequel return more harder? Do you think Ken Senzel's mom like watched this and like gave him a pat on the head and was like, that's nice, dear. <laughs> yeah, the only Blu-ray of this is up on a fridge. <laughs> like, how's your movie going? Has I anyone contacted movie. you for a copy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, I, I originally wanted some sort of fucking backstory to explain what the shit was going on between the very bad woman and the lady in red. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I wanted to know what the fuck was going on there. Um, and with Jason Stackhouse, but then, you know, Donnie brings up a good point. Who fucking cares? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just saying a straight to video sequel could be anything, including a completely different movie that's way better. I was actually inspired by you, Adrian, and what you said about the curious assassin. So <laughs> um, my my story is gonna be called The Curious Ass a Curious Assassin. And I can't tell if it's going to be a kitten or if it's going to be a monkey because I love monkeys. Oh. But like, um, yeah, I think a kitten or a monkey, they just they're an assassin and they go around killing people. But they're also curious. So they rip apart the bodies to find out what's going on in there. <laughs> What's oh, this, thought George, no. as he rifled his pockets and took out his Blackberry? <laughs> you should know that the most deadly assassin is a kitten with mittens across a carpet, kitten because that's how stealthy mittens. they are. That's a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you feel ready to face this off? Oh, how do we do? <laughs> Adriel. Okay, so uh, for the old sniper, obviously the only person it could possibly be is Rob Reiner. Because let's face it, the dude's like halfway Rob Reiner as it is. Um, okay. uh, for the mean pimp lady, Ida Lupino. Um, for right. the lady in red, Penny Marshall. Um, <laughs> for Aranya, Peter Bogdanovich. Uh, we got cinematography by Freddie Francis. Uh, music by John Carpenter. A, a posthumously produced screenplay by Orson Welles and directed by Arthur Penn. That way, the entire cast are directors because <laughs> this movie had zero directors. <laughs> uh, Donnie? Oh, God. If I have to, the woman in red is Selena Gomez. The old <laughs> sniper is Ray Liotta. Ooh. The very bad woman is Michelle Rodriguez. And the part of Nicolas Cage Arana is Adam Sandler. There you go. Christ. Uncut dicks. Yes. <laughs> Give me an Oscar. If I had to recast this, actually, I think I'd, I'd just change the story altogether and uh, make it all about a killer uh, uh, chain letter. <laughs> Ripper, letter from hell. 
kill Trey Letter. <laughs> Um, but if I had to recast this, I'd say as Aranya, I would have Winnie the Pooh. Um, Ooh. as the lady in red, I'd have Tigger. Um, <laughs> as, uh, Hold on, I love Mars's you. dad, <laughs> um, I would have, uh, uh, Rabbit and, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, and then, uh, let's see, I guess, uh, I'd have Eeyore as... Actually, I think Eeyore would be the better uh, choice for old sniper? the yeah the old sniper, and then I well I could Tigger visit you at college, but we're gonna Jason die. Stackhouse. Yeah, <laughs> my daughter hates me. <laughs> <laughs> and, got a nail uh, in my ass. Yeah, <laughs> as the very bad woman, I would have um. I'd have Kanga, mm -hmm. and as uh, Sanchez, I guess I'd have Rue. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. There's Rabbit. Mm -hmm. and Every Piglet. time I heard Sanchez, um, I just kept thinking of Sancho. I am Sancho. I, am Sancho. Bring. I don't want to sound like a queer or nothing, but I think fires are very romantic. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> Excellent. Um, so, were y'all able to find any sort of fucking wisdom from this? Oh, I got two real no. choice pieces of wisdom. Right. The first one is, fucked if I know. <laughs> uh, and the second one is, don't ring hotel bells like that. No. Yeah. Yes. Ever. Yeah, that's just rude. Not going to move any faster. But that thumb trick only works once. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> So even that would have been funny. It's like, that reminded me of Johnny Dangerously, where it's like, that trick only worked once. 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 <laughs> <laughs> only once. <laughs> My mom called me an asshole once. <laughs> <laughs> once. Carlo and I always say that. <laughs> like, once. <laughs> um, well, uh, for me, I found that, oh, uh, here it is. Uh, I found two things. One, that Cage has the hands and eyes of a violent man. And um, yes. also, don't use a strange gun without checking it first. Always check the yeah. barrel. <laughs> That's good advice. And, uh, yeah, I guess this is the time to say please listen, follow, rate, download, and review Cage's Kiss on Apple Podcasts and over on Podchaser, especially on Apple Podcasts because it helps other people find us. Uh, check out our stuff on YouTube with that awesome Adrian Art in the videos, the videos. Oh. Um, and uh, we also feature stills from the movie in there. Uh, and sometimes uh, Adrian sneaks little animations in there. It's pretty cool. Uh, you better watch because it might happen. Sneaky Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak on them in there. Uh, also, check out our Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash cages kiss. For just a dollar a month, you could get uh, stickers and buttons from Cage's Kiss. You can get a, a uh, you could download a uh, ringtone of our theme song. And um, just last month, Donnie uh, organized this. Uh, well, actually, no, I guess this was back in October because this is going to be. Yeah, I think this is October. coming out in December. Oh. October. Um, Donnie organized a really awesome uh, uh, game play Who? where we played oh. uh, uh, um, fa Phasmophobia with uh, some Patreon patrons and uh, the <laughs> our friend Steve from Everything I Learned from Movie, uh, Movies died first, so he got some awesome prizes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Donnie didn't die. Phasmophobia? Yeah. Wasn't that that one Def Leppard album? Uh-huh. Uh, Phasmophobia! <laughs> a phobia! Phasmophobia. When you get that feeling, you stop believing. <laughs> burn down a building <laughs> <laughs> remember you can find cages kiss on instagram facebook and on twitter at at cages kiss you can visit our website at cageskiss.com and you can write to us at cageskiss at gmail.com uh, check out my other podcast about witches and history and stories of all media and all genres uh, bed knobs and broom flicks that's b r o o M F L I C K S. You know we're good because we got licks in the end. Linda is the self-appointed um, queen of all media. Just so you know. Yeah. 
Also check me out as Lila in Dispatches of Disassociation and as Patrice and Lieutenant Murphy in Coyote's Bluff. That was a blast. But uh, Adrian, where can the people find you? Oh, the usual. You can find me crying my eyes out driving around a, a Chevy car for my security job. But when I'm not at work, you can find me as Leo the Fox on DeviantArt and on my Patreon, where I would like you to give me a dollar to see secret artworks. Leo the Fox is all lowercase, all one word, all run together, L-E-O-T-H-E-F-O-X. You can follow my various stories and a pictures on there, and I got content on my YouTube under A.A. Smith. There is a video on there entitled Content. Go and see what that is. It's only 30 seconds. Give Adrian a dollar oh, wow. for tokens for the bunny booth. <laughs> Nude girls. Nude girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, was a... people find you. I'm Unreal Goals on the Twitter as the Instagram as well as well, that's not actually true. I am <clears throat> still Gar the Twilight <clears throat> on Instagram. And I am Unreal Goals over on YouTube with my thing of a bob i do every now and then when i get drunk and want to rant masturbate the bottle yes <laughs> speaking of masturbating i also join my sister on coyote's bluff <laughs> and i'm also the boy who blew over on the red tube that didn't come across too well find me but don't <laughs> <laughs> speaking of masturbating it makes me think of linda <laughs> So when I walked uh, in, looked at my ass. Tasking. I couldn't find the desk. Why is that situated like that? No, no, you're not maximizing the potential here. The gift shops here and the bars over here. It doesn't make any sense. This is why you have no guests. You've given up. Admit it. Oh, you'll be hearing from us next week when we cover Primal. Um, unfortunately, oh. Adrian will not be joining. I will us. be dead he, by then. Yeah, he's actually pla- uh, planning a, a trip to space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna find Gene Roddenberry's coffin and I'm gonna suck the knowledge out of his brain. That's when you know someone's <laughs> finished because they always end up in. Space. <laughs> He's gonna suck the knowledge. Out that's of why dude. we need the National Treasure Part Three. You know they're going to fucking space eventually. <laughs> <laughs> they went to the North Pole, France, to the Nazi moon base. Where is left <laughs> with space? <laughs> the founding fathers put it on an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Liv Tyler. <laughs> You'll be <laughs> so uh you could find Primal uh streaming for free with a subscription in uh Amazon Prime, Hulu, Direct TV, yeah. or Epics. Otherwise, Apple TV seems to be the only place that rents it, but you can buy it in any one of the usual places. But you um, probably won't want to pay money for it. No, <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, you know, we're we're all about that um taking care of yourself with this this show. <laughs> all about self-care. Um, so uh until then in our next uh, episode, Puta, I won't kill you. I love you. I never <laughs> will forget. She will tell you anything way that you she look wants to sleep with you tonight. Do. I kill you. I love well, you. we did already. Fuck! <laughs> Just saying, I was slapping that ass, getting my dick wet. If you get my drift, sex me. No. Cage's kiss, getting our dicks wet. Unf, unf, unf. Cage, 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 peach. I could eat a peach for hours. Please. Kiss me.